you know <laughs> you did it you succeeded in it who's the better actor here Welcome to Behind the Slate, where I sit down with fellow voice actors and other industry artists to have a five-side chat. I'm your host, Christian O'Boyle. If you'd like to know more about me, please check out my website at christianoboyle.com. In this episode, I'll be talking with Rachel Messer, a professional actress who is voiced in commercials, animes, cartoons, and video games. She's appeared in Funimation shows such as Sistine, Akashi Records, Black Clover, Goblin Slayer, Tokyo Ghoul Re, My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, Fairy Tale, along with many more Funimation titles. Rachel does most of her work voicing in video games, some of which are System Shock, Warframe, Fiend Hunter Arteo, Pop Punk Helen Smite, Moji, and well over 300 other video game characters. For a full list of her work, check out rachelmesser.com. She has also acted in many films and was on the Disney Channel in 2017 on a show called Polaris Primetime. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing great. Um, my wife right now is in a uh, run week, tech week of The Little Mermaid. So she's actually making Ursula's uh, tentacles and her skirt and stuff. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She's a seamstress. So she's actually, you might hear the, uh, the sewing machine in the background because she's nice. actually putting those tentacles together and stuff. I actually have one back there. It's the little white thing next to the uh, computer, but I'm not good. <laughs> I have been trying to make the basic dress that I like saw the blueprint or the cutout for blueprint. I'm going to go with blueprint. That is okay. the most professional seamstress term. Uh, for about three years now, I've been trying to make this basic dress. Right. And, uh, it's going, it's going. It's coming, it's, coming, it's, coming along. <laughs> you know, great things take time. I'm sure eventually I'll have a summer dress by like summer 20. 34. There we go. That, that's, that's some positivity. Yeah. Positivity. There we go. We'll, we'll give a little shout out to Little Mermaid. Aww. <laughs> How have you been? I'm, I'm doing really good. Um, you know, just uh, taking every day at a time and trying to make it succeed in this crazy world in terms of making a, a, a business kind of grow from nothing. So. so are you trying to, you're, you're voiceover, but are you trying to go into like a marketing side of things as well? No, I've been, so I'm marketing so that I can do like commercials voiceover. and explainer videos for voiceover. But a lot of people have been hiring me to design their websites. So you oh. that, so I, I um, have design skill from my photography because I'm a full-time photographer, not full-time, sorry. Professional photographer, not a full-time photographer. And I've learned how to design logos and websites and stuff like that because of that. And therefore, I've actually been getting work from other voice actors to design their websites. I bet you could honestly get work for headshots too, couldn't you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do nice. headshots, but unfortunately, being in Seattle, there's not... I mean, there are some voice actors here, but... Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I started in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so I feel you, man. Yeah, so... Um, you know, it, it, it is, it's, it's great doing what I do. Um, but again, like I said, trying to expand this, I initially started voiceover, I think as most people do as a hobby ish, but yeah. I came into the hobby as a professional mindset. Like this is a business, um, because of doing my photography, I already had the business mindset in terms of accounting, marketing, branding, and stuff like that. So I started immediately with that. Yeah. Oh, that's a good nifty little thing there. <laughs> yeah. So I've only been doing voice acting for a year and a half now. Come about, about so, yeah. That's a good amount. Uh, and honestly, like, uh, uh, <laughs> I've noticed people that start off as hobbies or hobbyists mm -hmm. tend to be the ones that go rather far with it. Just because I think part of it is like, if you start in with like, oh, I'm going to be the best, uh, then you put this pressure on themselves and they, mm -hmm. they all burn out. So I think like everybody I've talked to that actually like goes on and does, like I have two microphones in the shot. <laughs> Double the microphones. <laughs> Which one are you talking through? Oh, oh. That's, that's the mystery. There's a mystery afoot in this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a fuzz in the background. 
Yay, Fuzz. And it's fixed. <laughs> Look at that. Man, you just learned some interior design skills when you're doing photos. You're like, oh, <laughs> just put this in front of that and no one knows. Could just blur that out in the background or just yeah. have a whole whole conspiracy theory of what the fuzz is from. It's gone. It's from dogs. <laughs> I have three. <laughs> I'll give you it's from a dog toy. I'll give you that info yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So in in general, um, I started knowing that this is a business. Mm -hmm. I didn't start voice acting because I wanted to make money though. I started voice acting because I had a passion for acting. I've been acting for five and a half years. Oh, uh, okay. And because... I take it with your wife, you started in theater? Mm -hmm. Is that where you guys met? No, no. Oh, that would have been so cute. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we met at church camp. Um, oh, so like probably a while back. I was 18. Okay. Yeah. We started dating and we were both 18. She just was about to turn 19. And then we got married. I was 20. She was 21 when we got married. So Aww. we've been married for uh, seven and a half years now. And we That's have a little amazing. four and a half year old little squirt. <laughs> Is it a boy or a girl? Girl. Her name's Aww. Lillian. So she Aww. loves she loves everything from dance to music to Acting. Oh, she's artsy. Okay, oh, well, no, I guess she, both her parents yeah, in the, so the art field. It's she's already bad. doing ballet. She just got moved up to intermediate ballet. Um, I like to imagine in her teenage years, she's going to rebel and she's going to be like, I'm going to be an architect, dad. You, you know, I almost, be, I, almost, I almost went for architecture. So I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I started going to school for programming and I took programming in high school at the senior year and I said, <laughs> <laughs> not for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then so i was like i'm gonna become an architect and then started doing the, all the uh research in terms of going getting an architect degree and i was like <laughs> nope yeah. and then i was i graduated i ended up transferring from a university to a community college got a degree in fine arts and then ended up just continued doing what i was doing and eventually i was like i'm gonna uh, get a certificate in interior design nope not gonna do that so i had my photography and so i was like i'll, I'll just photograph interior design <laughs> so. i wish i'd uh there was always those interior design classes that were uh because they were in the same i was a theater major they were mm. in the same building as the the theater department and i always looked at it and i was like i could probably figure that out and now i look at my house and i'm like God bless it. I wish I'd taken an interior design class. <laughs> Just one. Like watching yeah. tutorials on YouTube. Like, I don't know how to Help come up me. with this stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jesse and I both have a knack for interior design and style and stuff like that. So I think that kind of encouraged because we love looking at like HGTV magazine and Lux magazine, all that stuff. And I was going through that and I was like, oh, I would love to photograph stuff like this. So then I went into real estate photography and the first two photo shoots I did for a real estate agents, I said, I'm never going to do that again because both of them screwed me over. Oh, like one was like a three and a half photo shoot. She didn't pay me. Mm -hmm. And the other one was a regular photo shoot. She paid a hundred, which is cheap, but didn't use my images because she didn't know how to download them off of Dropbox. So I was like, wow. Okay. Uh, I don't want to do this again. Yeah. Sure enough, my friend's a real estate agent. He hired me for the first one and it literally just spiled from there and then did interior design for designers and stuff like that. And so, yeah. Please help. Cause like I have a green chair and yellow lights and a bluish purple other light. It's, it's a rainbow and in blue hair, it's a rainbow here. I have actually considered doing some sort of interior design consulting. It wouldn't be interior design. It'd be a, uh, interior decorating yeah i've considered interior decorating uh as a consultor consultant wow uh so i mean i i have helped my sister-in-law and brother-in-law kind of get their place a little bit actually jesse and i we kind of work as a team uh Aww. so we we both worked on trying to make a space more breathe in terms of space and then functionally work and then just having everything kind of match and then the the first step is like what is your interior style because everyone has different styles and then so see i feel like 
my like I gave up on my bedroom. I just I've lived I've lived in this house for about four and a half years now and my bedroom is still like because to sell a house it helps to like paint the walls like a tan or a light color so people can imagine whatever they want I've just never painted it yeah. <laughs> so like it's still just tan and then I have a white bed sheet and then just like it's just brown furniture and just like a sea of white I'm like this looks like a college dorm <laughs> I should eventually fix this. But my like my living room, I took a summer and I did the living room and it's like really zen and relaxing. And then there's this room which is just like chaos. I feel like I'm just a whole bunch of clashing styles. Mm -hmm. You uh, go uh, into three different it's rooms. It's called uh, Boho Chic or uh, uh, I can't think of the other one. It starts with an E. Eclectic. There we go. Eclectic would probably be a good. A Eclectic good usually works. Um, you can really mix and match a lot of stuff. Yeah, I just buy what I like or like what comes free. Like this was inherited, this giant desk. I'm like, I had I one desk. almost exactly like that. As not I, but my my stepdad had one exactly like that when I was a kid. Oh whoa! Almost. Yeah, that one I think is supposed to be for sewing because there's like a little thing in between. But what's weird is like the sewing um, machine doesn't fit when I try to close it, so hmm. I have to put the sewing machine. It's I, I need, this is free. This is what I found. Somebody, they put the top on backwards, like it was just assembled and they put the top on backwards and I don't know why they, it was my neighbors. I don't know why they didn't just unscrew it and flip it back. I don't know if they glued it or what, but I was like, you know what? I'll just paint it. Now you can't tell the top is backwards. And there you go. Save there myself. you go. <laughs> and then you got a fancy under end. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's there you go. <laughs> Best of both worlds. <laughs> So what got you into acting? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, you would think at this point I would know what got me into to acting. Yeah. Um, I do know that like I was a biology major in college. Hmm. And uh, there was like, I just for some reason wanted to take an acting class. I think because mm -hmm. I'd seen at, like a, as like 12 or 13, I'd seen this behind the scenes video. And I was mm -hmm. just thinking, oh, that's cool. Like for some, that was like, I, I just didn't separate like this is these are actors and at, at that age I was still like just believing what I saw on screen it was you right. got stuff in the story and then I was like oh there are people behind this like doing things and, and acting mm -hmm. I want to try that um and so when I got into college I was like you know what I've always kind of wanted to try it why not and uh I so I just signed up for like an acting 101 class and uh the teacher of that class was also having a, a an audition for her play mm -hmm. so I was like you know what I want to look back on my life and just say at least I tried like wouldn't that be cool to just be like hey I tried auditioning for something once right. uh, and so I went in and auditioned that I was terrified and then at the same time another school in town was having film auditions for their college film mm -hmm. students so I was like again let's just go for it okay I, I don't think this is this will work out but uh uh, it'll be a fun little experience to say like, hey, once I auditioned for a film. Yeah. Uh, and I got a part in both. So I, uh, I remember like I was in rehearsals and everything and I had a speaking part. It was uh, a Greek tragedy, which is a great thing to start off acting with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, uh, I was like, we, I was part of the chorus and they had divided up the chorus lines throughout mm -hmm. like all, I think there were eight or 10 of us. And I will remember like sitting backstage on opening night going, wait, I don't know if I have stage fright. What if I go out on stage and I forget all of my lines? I was like, well, we're a little too late to turn back now. I guess nothing stops me from changing my name later on and just moving cities. Uh, so I, I went out and I did it and I got this rush afterwards. And I ran up to my parents. I was like, Mom, Dad, I'm not going to be a biology major anymore. I'm going to be a theater major. And <laughs> to their credit, at that point, I had tried to change my major like 12 times. I think uh, the last they heard, I was going to be a baker, which uh, <laughs> wouldn't have worked out well considering uh, I set my house on fire cooking when I was 17. So th <laughs> that may have also been a bad career choice to, to go with for me personally. Um, and then I actually tried to back out of being a theater major in my junior year. That's uh, kind of late in the game, but I was like, you know, yeah. I don't know if this is for me. I don't really particularly like seeing myself on film. I get kind of cringy about it. Yeah. And uh, I, I, it's going to be real hard to make a living as a theater actor. 
especially like I probably have to travel a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. So I was complaining to a friend like, hey, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I don't know what my uh, ideas are or, or what my options are. I guess I could be a, uh, I think I was going to switch to an archaeologist, but I just had a really mean, terrible teacher. And I think that's probably a good thing looking back. And my friend was just like, oh, you know, you do a lot of weird voices. Why don't you go into voice acting? And so I just went back to my dorm room and Googled voice acting auditions and Went from there? <laughs> yeah. There you go. That is that is one way to to go from one spectrum or medium to the other. Yeah. Um, I actually thought about doing voice acting about eight or ten years ago. And mm -hmm. I looked up voice acting and behind the scenes and I watched someone do like the take over and over and over and I go, <laughs> that sucks. And I never <laughs> thought about voice acting. <laughs> don't want to do that. Bye. I don't want to do that. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Then falling into doing acting and theater and stuff like that, you get the understanding of, oh, actually, this is what it is. And then looking at voice acting again, I was like, this is intense and takes a lot of patience and practice and imaginative. Because, yeah, you're in a booth by yourself trying to think of killing someone in a fantasy realm with a sword. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I actually kind of like that like I kind of came from the opposite thing because again I came from theater where mm -hmm. we had to do weeks upon weeks of rehearsals and the mm -hmm. same sh and then like we would have two to six week sh you know show runs and by that point I'm like this is three months I've been saying the same lines I'm really done with it I'd yeah. love to move on to something else so when I got into voice acting I was like oh we just do like three or four takes as uh, maybe five or six until we get the one you're happy with I I can All do right. this here we go cool. Yeah, and, and as soon as I, I then uh, reapproached the thought of it, because initially my, my father-in-law, he's developing a video game, and he, he goes, hey, I want you and maybe everyone else to kind of voice. And I was like, oh, sure, I got a, a cheap microphone, a $50 microphone that I bought for, we have a, a had a YouTube series called uh, Mr. and the Misses. And I was like, I'll just uh, throw that up in this room over here, and we'll just kind of talk into it. And that sounds great. <laughs> And I was like, let me just make sure that that's exactly what you do. And I looked up voice acting. And I was like, <laughs> I'm wrong again. <laughs> and I was like, I like this so much. So I, I went up to Jesse and I was like, so voice acting. She goes, mm-hmm. I'm just like, would you want to do it? She goes, yeah. I was like, okay, it's expensive. She goes, uh, yeah. I was like, and big. Like, all my hobbies are huge. I'm a drummer. Oh, okay. <laughs> photography just takes up a lot of stuff now a booth <laughs> so she goes i mean i'm i'm used to just your hobbies just taking up half the house i was like sounds good <laughs> so i i took a room and we 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 went from there Aww. so she, i love that you and your wife are just like so i don't know i i guess because that's like coming from the single thing i'm just like that's so sweet that you guys are like so supportive of each other and you do the same stuff together and you're in the same medium ish i mean it's mm -hmm. acting related it's performance she uh, still I, I mean i still do theater i mean i i still do it um she wants to do voice acting she just hasn't had the opportunity because of child uh yeah. and time and stuff like that but yeah um that's the sweetest it's because we met at bible camp that's that's what it has to be <laughs> I know that you, you've probably been doing voice acting for several years. I actually just had my, uh, what was it, a couple of days ago, my seventh year anniversary of when I started. That is awesome. <laughs> so now you are, and I'm sure for a while now, you, you do workshops and you do private coachings. What yeah. has that experience been like? I think it's taught me uh, a lot in the, in the terms of communication with things because you can't, I don't think you can teach something personally anyway, and I, I could be wrong. I don't know all the ways of teaching, um, but I don't think you can properly explain what you're trying to explain to a student without learning how to communicate better. Mm -hmm. uh, because like I've run into this with certain directors or teachers as well that are just like, oh yeah, just just change this. And you're like, wait, change it how? Like I, I need to know how to change it, which, which thing? Or like do it again, but different. And you're like, uh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I need help. And so on the one hand, it's helped me learn how to direct because mm -hmm. I can 
articulate my emotion or my thoughts better. Mm -hmm. And then it's also helped me with clients that don't know how to articulate what they want, that I can kind of uh, use that of like, okay, what exactly, when you say change it or keep it the same, but make it different, what exactly are you meaning make different? What are you, like, I can break it down a little bit more. So it's helped me uh, performance wise. And then it's also helped me with directing and, and communicating. So you, you feel that your coaching has helped you as an actress as well? Yeah. 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 Now I'm not saying people should start coaching and then start acting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it should work that way. Right. Right. I don't think I started coaching until five years into uh, voice acting and I'd been doing it professionally for a couple of years yeah. before then as well. Now, did you still feel that you were nerve wracking or did you still feel that you might not be ready or capable uh, to do it? Were you hesitant in that? I think, uh, yes. Yeah, for sure. But I feel like that in every regard of my life. Uh, mm -hmm. In every situation, I'm like, I don't think, uh, you know, sometimes I get roles or I get opportunities. And I'm like, I don't think I qualify for this. I don't think this is a... Uh, I think you you got the wrong person. I think they call it imposter syndrome. Mm. Uh, but it's definitely a thing of like, not only just with teaching, but with acting, with a lot of things. I'm like, mm, I, don't, I don't know how I got to this situation, but okay. I will gladly tackle it. I'm going to do my, my best and they'll probably never call me again. <laughs> you know, starting from just the start of my career, being like, let's see where this goes. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Let's see. Let's go on stage and see if I remember the lines. Let's go audition for something to say I did it. Mm -hmm. um, and so at a certain point, I was like, yeah, let's just try it. Um, and I think over time, like you get experience with it. Like I definitely still feel more confident uh, with video games than I do with anime. And I think that's because I've got like five or six years of video games and like, one and a half or two of anime. So when I walk in there, I still get nervous, uh, unless it's with like a director that I've worked with a lot before, mm -hmm. but I still sometimes get nervous of like, okay, I gotta like prove that I can do this. And I still screw, every time I go into anime, I script the first take, hands down. I don't know how I managed to do it. I don't know if it's like I get in my head and therefore I jinx it. Uh, but video games, I can just like go in and I feel confident. I feel like ready to go. Mm -hmm. And it's just a weird uh, thing. So again, I don't know how much of that is uh, confidence per se, or maybe there's a difference between confidence and cockiness. Cause I, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't go in being like, I'm the best. Uh, I you, you yeah, I, I, you throw anything. Me, my, I'm like, you throw anything my way. I'll try it. I yeah. don't, I can't tell you I'll be the best. Uh, yeah. and, uh, that's, I somehow told the client that on occasion. This, there was actually a director for anime that was like, can you do this? I was like, let's find out. Let's find, find yeah. out together. Won't we? <laughs> I th I, and I think that's just a, a, a fun experience. I, I, the challenges that acting or just even any freelancing kind of throws at you. Just like, can you do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's find out. My favorite was, uh, I've been put on the spot of, can you growl like a bear? Can you cluck like a chicken? Can you cluck like a scared chicken? Uh, and then can you uh, neigh like a sexy horse? <laughs> I don't know. This, I don't know. I don't know, man. I just got one where it's like, uh, can you sound like a velociraptor parrot? <laughs> so is that a velociraptor that's also part parrot or is that a parrot imitating a velociraptor? It's a gargoyle parrot that sounds like a, a gargoyle velociraptor parrot. <laughs> I love this field, man, because that's what you get sometimes. You yeah. like... And that's why I think it's impossible to be like, oh, I'm always prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. I think you can be prepared to try anything. Uh, but if you've practiced your scared chicken and your gargoyle vampire, or I'm sorry, gargoyle uh, velociraptor <laughs> parrot, I want to know, like, how, how are you going through those things, like, every day? It's just there's going to be things that are thrown to you that you're like. How do you cross, <laughs> how do you visually process that? Velociraptor <laughs> parrot. Mm -hmm, that's a gargoyle. Right. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got it. Oh, you know, just normal Tuesday. I saw that last week. It's, it's <laughs> I just had, I had a character and, uh, and I actually got cast in it. Uh, I have a character that he goes, the character is sarcastic in this and that. And I saw the image of the character. I was like, 
He's so cute. How is he sarcastic? <laughs> I love it. So I, I, I did my best impression for a sarcastic, cute kind of character, and I landed it. He goes, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, sweet. I have no <laughs> idea how I did that, but yeah, glad, glad, glad we approve. I feel like, I don't know if it's just you and I, or maybe just I, I feel like most of the time I go in, I'm like, I'm, I'm just having fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to stress this, fun in a professional sense, because I've seen people come into studios that are like having fun and you're like, okay, like let's, let's tone it down a little. Uh, yeah. Like there was one person that came out of the studio and broke a table. I'm like, let's not damage property having fun. Let's not do that far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I've seen people that, you know, go that, but like having fun and being open to, to try different things. And, and I think being open to failing, like yeah. that's, that's a huge thing. If you put a lot of pressure on yourself of like, I need to be absolutely perfect all the time. It's, it's going to drive you insane. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. There's, there's no perfect. And I think I was listening to, tr no, it was uh, Crispin Freeman. And he was talking about how one of his first sessions and he was in a uh, studio, they cast him as a character. And then they went, mm, I don't think this is the character for you. And they're like, how to let him go. So, I mean, it happens. And yeah. I think failing as an artist in any aspect is to be expected. Yeah. And I think that's what I've seen kill a lot of new voice actor careers is they go in being like, I'm going to be the absolute best. Uh, everybody's going to love everything. And then they audition for two or three projects and they don't get it. And they're like, oh, never mind. I'm terrible. Right. And uh, I have to tell them, I'm like, I do like 40 to 50 auditions a day. If I got like hung up on the percentage that I don't get, uh, I, I probably would stop. <laughs> It's just, it's one of those things. I'm like, you got to have fun mm -hmm. with what you're doing and you got to be open to fail because you're gonna. And uh, I was telling somebody this, uh, another voice actor this the other day, there's going to be bad reviews. There's going to be people that don't like you. There's going to be people that don't like you for no reason. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, get upset about it and take it to heart, like I don't think, I think there's a difference between being open to constructive criticism mm -hmm. and being open to people just trying to tear you down. And you can, you have to be able to spot the difference, to spot that line and be like, this is somebody trying to help. And this is somebody just trying to, you know, squish you down kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you're going to run into that. You're not going to be perfect at all. In fact, I'm sure you can look up your favorite voice actor and find some kind of bad review where somebody's just like, oh, I hate this person. I can't believe they cast them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is very true. Um, and in, in, in regards to, um, feedback i think just in general we need to as a community learn to give good constructive feedback or criticism yeah. uh because either they say hey that was perfect and blah 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 and they're lying and they're not giving you true feedback or they give you such a harsh feedback they're in all good intention but they don't do it right so therefore it crushes the person that they're trying to actually help so there has to, I think people kind of, we should do a constructive feedback course on how to properly I, give people good reviews and, and good, good advice. I was going to say that I, uh, one of the things coaching has taught me is how to do that because you can't just give negatives because somebody walks away feeling, and there's, there's a, even like, I, I talk about this of the way I structure my classes of this class will be designed, you know, beginner classes there's not so much individual feedback as there is group feedback mm -hmm. because then people still get notes that they need, mm -hmm. but they don't get, uh, you know, Oh, Stacy, you're terrible. Never act again. Uh, <laughs> which is also just not helpful, but Stacy, you're doing everything right. I'm sorry if there's somebody named Stacy listening. I, I just pulled that name out. <laughs> um, Shame. I know all the Stacy's are going to leave a comment and they're going to be like, Oh my God, I, I hate Rachel Messer. <laughs> um, but it, it's taught me that you have to, I always tell, and I tell my students this in the classes where we start giving individual feedback, which is normally like intermediate to advanced classes mm -hmm. uh, or performance classes. I say, give, you know, three positive things and two negative things. And then it can't just be, I liked it 
or I liked your emotion or I didn't like it, but I don't know why. Like it has to have something like when you had a trem tremor in your voice, it made it sound more realistic that you were trying to hold back tears. It mm -hmm. has to be something that gives more detail into what was good about the performance. But if somebody walks away with more good than bad, normally they will uh, feel better about the situation. Mm -hmm. They'll go, okay, I'm not perfect, but I did some good things and mm -hmm. I've got some things to work on. Mm -hmm. And I think having things to work on is very, very important. If you're not working on something, like I still listen to my own performances and go, oh, I could have done that so much better. <laughs> I don't think there's, there's like a couple of performances where I'm like, hey, that was all right. I'm, I'm proud of you. But uh, most of the time it's like, oh, I did good on those lines, but I wish I would have changed up this line. And I'm always analyzing my past performances so that I can improve yeah. in the future. And I think that's just acting in general. When you look back, and even when you do a show, when you do a stage show and you develop this character that you really get immersed into this character, and then you look back at your first performances, you're like, hmm, okay. I'm glad I've developed to where I am now. Well, if you play that character again a year later, you'll even have more to hone in from because you go, okay, this is what I did when I was fully immersed into this. So there's always this uh, growth that you're doing. And yeah, I, look, I looked back at my uh, per performances, my first projects uh, a year and a half ago, and I, I've, I've grown. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they're bad but I've grown immensely. Um, so I am better than what I was, but they weren't bad. So just a, a constant growth in terms of improving. Yeah. Um, and I think there's also the, there's, there's a word for this, I believe there, or a phrase where human beings tend to take negative like you can get, and I'm sure anybody who's got a YouTube or, you know, is online or something, mm -hmm. you can get 50 comments that are like, love this. This was amazing. This is the best. And that one comment that's like, you're trash. That one is the one that you walk away with like, oh, why didn't they like it? What did I, maybe it was bad. Maybe all these people are lying to me. And this one person telling me this is actually true. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to partly, you know, I think some of that is from exposure, um, just like slowly easing into it. And that's why I'm glad that as far as I know, there's no, it, it's very uncommon for somebody in acting to just suddenly be a star or suddenly be popular. Right. Um, and there's like a slow growth to it. So you can slowly get used to that. Oh, here's a negative comment. Oh, here's a negative comment. And you could start to shake it off. Right. Yeah. There was a couple when we were doing our YouTube channel, Somewhat, again, our YouTube channel was a vlog, a family vlog, yeah. mostly about when Jesse was pregnant and then having a baby. And then my, I had double jaw surgery, so it kind of covered that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so every once in a while, there'd be like a horrible review and you're, or a horrible comment. And you're like, I, I don't, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like what, what inside of you? feel so bad that you feel to say that your child is ugly or something like that just like i don't i don't i don't get it yeah but. and it's it's a thing it's part of it is like i'm on twitch so i get i get that like just live where it's just like uh some kind of horrible comment i'm like okay you know yeah. go go die in a hole no thank you i'm gonna continue doing what i'm doing here yeah so you and your your Twitch, you just started streaming. I believe you you uh, you stream a lot of the games that you have voiced in, correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm branching out slowly into games that I haven't voiced in, mm -hmm. um, but that's just the having fun. But I did start, and I still primarily do video games that I voice in. How has that been? It's been cool. I really like it. Um, and again, on like the performance side of things, there's a couple characters that I'll play or I'll hear in game, and I'll go, hey. That like that, that's pretty all right. I'm okay with that. Uh, it's one of those things where sometimes, again, I don't know if it's just because I have very low confidence or something, but I'm like, you couldn't ask me to do that again. I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what was in my coffee that morning, but I did really good that day. Uh, Rachel brought her a game that day. And then there's other times where there's certain characters that I play, and I'm just like, why? Why did anyone hire me? 
how did this get jobs? Why do people like this? <laughs> um, and it, you know, what's odd about that is I've noticed that the characters that are the ones that I cringe at the most are most similar to my voice or my speaking pattern or anything uh -huh. like that. So I, I'm starting to think that it's just, I really hate my natural speaking voice. And the ones that I like the most are like vastly different from what I Very actually characterized. Sound. Yeah. And so that makes it feel, uh, I guess, like there's a split of this one sounds like me and this one I can just imagine isn't. And right. the separation makes it a, a lot easier to like that character. Yeah. Um, I, I will say it was really cool. I, I used to play a lot of League of Legends mm -hmm. and uh, I still hope to voice for, I know it's like a, uh, not as popular as it was, but I still would love to voice for League of Legends. And uh, I, I used to, when I played that game, I would talk along with the characters and I would say their alts or, or something like that. And uh, I was playing Smite, which is a similar style game. Mm -hmm. And I was playing as my character and I said the alt line with it just because that was habit from that type of gameplay. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why this free, like I stopped midstream, like I stopped gameplay and everything. I was like, this is weird. <laughs> I don't know why this is weird. This is like, that was the moment that it hit me of like, Hey, you're in this game. Like you're, this is your character. This, this is, is you. Yeah. And I, again, I think it's cause I played league before I was mm -hmm. voice acting and mm -hmm. I've done that for so long. And it was just, it was really weird of like, Oh, I'm the one actually saying this. This is me. And, uh, it was, just, it was very, I didn't think about it for long. Cause I was like, that's, that's weird. Okay. I'm going to get back to gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> ah. um. Yeah, exactly. What kind of inspired you to start streaming? Uh, a couple different things. Um, so I, it was around November and uh, I'd been working my, uh, I don't know if I can curse, my butt off uh, this whole, like all of 2018. Um, yeah, it's 2008. Yeah, it's 2019. I was working... <laughs> My wrist says it was 2018, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I, I've been working off completely and I used to watch YouTube videos pretty frequently. And uh, uh, you know, this, you know, it's contra, I don't know. Anyway, so I used to watch, I watch PewDiePie. Every, I still watch PewDiePie every video. He's going through Minecraft right now and I don't even play Minecraft and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'll watch it. Um, but it was around December. So like John Tron just suddenly popped back up uh, for his yearly Christmas video. Uh, PewDiePie was doing a uh, charity stream. Uh, Jacksepticeye was doing a charity stream. And I was just like, man, that's so cool that they're able to give back like that. And I want to have some kind of contribution in the world that's like, that I, I guess I can see because with a lot of voice acting, it's very easy to just, you know, I, especially because I don't look up reviews. I can't. It, it's one of those things that like, if I look up reviews and I see that one negative thing, I'm still going to go away going, oh, the whole community hated it. The whole game game community hated it. And part of streaming on Twitch has helped that. Of like, I still, like, last night I ran into somebody that was like, those characters suck! I was like, okay, thanks. Um, but most of the other people, like, came because they liked the characters. And they were like, yeah. oh, that's really cool that the voice actress is playing as these characters. I, I want to see that situation. Um, but so... I, I don't look up reviews and with voice acting, it's really easy to just do the job and assume that nobody hears it uh, yeah. or it, it didn't affect anybody. And I've learned, you know, when I, I had this like huge thing three years ago where I was thinking, man, I wish I was doing more to contribute to good things in the world versus I feel like I'm just recording video game characters. And that's it to me felt really selfish. Now, as I went through and I, I started opening up to friends about that kind of thing of like, I feel like I might be doing the wrong thing. You know, I had a friend that was like, video games saved my life. They stopped me from killing myself. So like you being a part of these is really important. You do, you do work that matters to somebody. Right. Right. Um, and I actually, when I'm 30, I want to get a tattoo from a video game, uh, like a, a video game quote. So I, I, now I've like kind of moved away from that and saw the greater impact it has but at the time I was just recording lines sending them off recording lines sending them off so I, would, I didn't see any of that right. um but so when that was all going on I was like man I would love to be able to do something like that and you know Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all that kind of stuff they don't really have that ability 
Um, I mean, they kind of can, you can tweet out a link, but Twitter's algorithm is like, no links, no thank you, you stay on this site. Uh, and Instagram, you can go live, but it's like, it, it's just a lot. Um, and so I was just like, man, it'd be, you know, I've, I've been playing video games for hobbies for years. I have every Nintendo system, uh, I have Sega systems, like I, I have all this stuff. And it'd be really cool to be able to do that, but I don't know, maybe one day. And at just like the same time, the animal shelter that I got this one from sent me the, it was again the end of the year, so it was like, hey, you can donate and write it off on your taxes, so if you want to donate to the shelter, help this out. So I actually wrote to one of the game companies that I did voiceover for called Epistory, and uh, they'd offered me before, they were like, hey, if you ever want to stream the game, we'll give you codes for the game to, to give away. And that was like two years ago, so I wrote back to them and I said, hey, could I get those codes? I think what I wanna do is I wanna raise money for this animal shelter and I'm just gonna go live on, on Twitch. And so I went live for a weekend and I gave out the codes and uh, we didn't raise a whole bunch. We raised maybe $75, but that's $75 more than that animal shelter had beforehand. Right. And I was just like, I really, I really like doing this. I really like being able to have a situation where people that, you know, at the time it was very small. I had like nine people watching me and uh you know i think i had like a hundred and something a hundred followers from back in the day when i streamed yandere simulator and it was allowed to be on there i streamed yandere simulator twice and uh got about a hundred followers from it and of course that was like three years ago so none of them are really active anymore so mm -hmm. it's like starting all over again and i was just like i'm gonna keep doing this and i'll i'll keep doing you know random uh donation streams and i did another one for valentine's day uh, yeah. where I, I raised some money and I've got another one planned, I think for, I'm, I'm waiting till the end of summer because everybody's always busy with summer. So I don't want to do a giveaway where people are like, oh, I already had plans and everything. So I'm waiting to the, or a giveaway, I'm sorry. Uh, I normally have giveaways with them because it brings in more people. I'm like, hey, yeah. while you're here for the giveaway, please consider donating to this the cause. Way. Yeah, we're, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me in any way. I don't handle the money. Just go to this website. And, and help a puppy out. And my stuff is normally animal related. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm working with a couple other streamers that we wanna do a uh, charity stream. Probably I'm gonna do two or three in the fall. That's awesome. So that's, that's where that all started from. <laughs> that's really cool. And that I like how you are contributing and kind of giving back in, in some sort of way. And especially you're in a way giving back from your voice acting. That's true. That is true. It yeah. gives it more, uh, uh, more reason behind that as well. More of a personal touch. I hadn't to thought it. of that before that. I like that. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> now we did mention that you have been doing years of video games and small amount of years of anime. And a lot of the, uh, titles and shows that you do is at Funimation, mm -hmm. but you live in Oklahoma. Lived. Yeah. Lived. Okay, so you moved. I did move to Dallas, yeah. But you were driving from Oklahoma to, to Texas. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember I was in one of your workshops and you mentioned that. I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, for I think about two years. It was back when I was doing, because I started at one point doing Walla uh, and it was just like little bit, bit parts here and there. And it was very infrequent. So I was like, well, financially, it's just a better decision for me to live because Dallas is expensive. Uh, and I was in Tulsa, which is cheaper. So I was like, I could just take the, you know, uh, the financial loss of having to drive once then, but I still am fine. Like if I'm having to pay $400 in rent in Tulsa versus $2,000 in rent to this, you know, Dallas place, especially because I have dogs. Right. Um, I was like, I could just, I, I'll just take the day to drive down there, pay some tolls and, and come back. And mm -hmm. it's not fun by any means, but I did that for about two years till I started getting consi consistent work. And then I, I finally was like, okay. I'll move. And then you I'll take try. the dive, and that—that's awesome. I—I—I've <laughs> <laughs> I, I've even considered just looking at it because, again, I'm new to voiceover, so I don't want to obviously move anywhere. And I'm in Seattle, so I'm gonna try to make it work. But I was mm -hmm. like, Jesse, have you? What do you think about moving to Dallas? Because LA n not gonna happen, uh, not with a child. So I was like, what do you think about li living in Dallas? She goes, oh, I'll consider it. I'd probably not, but let's let's look at it. And we were looking at the homes. Now, again, being where we're at, we're looking at homes in Dallas, and we're like, this is only 250? 
What? Oh yeah, because Seattle's kind of expensive too, isn't it? Uh, thankfully, I'm not exactly in Seattle, but yes, Seattle is like almost. Uh, Seattle is following the trend of San Francisco right now in terms of. Yeah. We are about 40 minutes out of Seattle, so we don't pay Seattle rates, but we're. I, in comparison to other places, especially in the South, we are more expensive home wise. Uh, but then again, you look at LA or you look at uh, Vancouver and we're like, we're nowhere near there. <laughs> or you look at Seattle even and you're like, ha, huh, not gonna happen. That's why like I, I technically live, it's just easier to say, like I used to live in Catoosa, but it was like easier to say Tulsa. And so I'm like, right. I live I live in uh, Plano, but it's easier to say just Dallas. And I live like not even the expensive part of Plano because there's there's that too. And I'm like, mm, just the very technically Plano, technically. I'm in Plano. No, I'm just going to say Dallas. Just Yeah, it's just easier to say yeah. that. I'm like, Dallas, yeah. there you go. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I say Seattle, even though I'm closer to Tacoma, but you know, it's 40 minute drive, which is nothing in comparison to commutes for stuff. But at the moment, I haven't actually had to commute for any sort of I've commuted once for one acting, and that was for on camera when I did my uh, uh, the project for WestJet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was on a commercial for WestJet. They do an April Fool's video every year, and they're like, we're going to have a party on a plane. I was like, what? And <laughs> you need to dress sexy business is what they said. And it's like, whatever that means. Uh, and then I love I was the like, definitions for things like that. Sexy business casual. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, I could do that. I have suits. I have vests. Like, I like, I like dressing up when I get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, I could do that. I get a separate email. And they're like, by the way, you're going to be the DJ. So we want you to kind of wear more of this. And I was like, I can do that too. <laughs> so <laughs> I think people, and, you know, and I see a lot of people that they tell me this. I, I got this from uh, somebody on Instagram the other day. They were like, I want to be a voice actor. So I'm moving immediately to Dallas. And I'm like, I was like, I don't know your situation. I don't know you, but I don't recommend that to my people, particularly like my students. I'm, I, I never just say, oh, just go out. You know, it's like saying, you know, I had a lot of this in college where my professor told, especially the graduating class, which, you know, was all of us. She said, just go out to LA, get an agent. You get an agent, you made it. You made it big. The hardest part is going to LA and making an agent. So a lot of them did that with barely any experience. And most of the experience they had were the stage plays for their college. And they didn't know how to format a resume. They didn't know how to do a, a lot of things. They didn't know anything. Like the thing about my college and because uh, I got a bachelor's degree in theater performance, I really would love to one day go back and teach that degree or like be the dean of that type of thing because there's so much that they don't cover they focus a lot on the performance stuff obviously but i like was two or three years into it and i was like we're just repeating the same drills the same exercises uh we're not delving any deeper into how to perform you'll talk about meisner you'll talk about uh uda hagen and all these kinds of things but we're not talking about psychology like i love talking about the psychology of speech to people especially considering voiceover mm -hmm. um but people ignore the psychology they even ignore body language especially like on film or theater but there's even body language for voice acting like r recognizing what your character is doing and uh, a little in script analysis we had a little bit of script analysis but mm. not a lot and there was nothing now thankfully my father is self-employed uh and started his own business so i can always go to him for advice, but there was nothing about marketing. There was nothing about taxes. There was nothing about budgeting uh, or, or anything that came to actually running a business. And in the end, that's what you're doing. And uh, you know, I, I tried to offer classes that's like social media for marketing or social media marketing for actors. Or, Which I miss and I'm still trying to get. <laughs> don't worry, I got you. I, I booked you for the next one. I don't know. I saw that. Hopefully I can make it, but yes, I did see that. If you can't, I can record it for you. Perfect. Um, but people skip out on that part because they want to focus a lot on the performance aspect. And I get that because that's I, that's too. what, yeah, that it is really important. In the end, you can be great at marketing. You can be great at advertising yourself, but if you can't act, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you can act, but you can't market, it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's one of those things that goes hand in hand. And I don't think a lot of people talk about 
that they don't talk about needing to know how to edit that like so much of this work now is online and mm -hmm. you need to be able to edit your own audio to uh you know all, all that kinds of jazz set up your own studio and everything mm -hmm. And it's one of those things, it's not the glorious part, it's not the fun part. We all wanna go out there and do different character voices and, and play different parts and all this kind of jazz. But you can't do that if you're not doing both at the same time. Considering um, so that you're in the booth maybe 20% or 30% of your actual business, mm -hmm. you're not actually constantly in the booth or doing uh, work you're 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 having to market especially when you're new you have to market you have to brand you have to do all the leg work so that way a couple of years from now you actually start getting continuous work and obviously you're going to still have to work your butt off to continue that in the long run mm -hmm. but it's a it, it's it's an odd thing and nobody really talks about that so i would love to go back and figure that out because i had a lot of people that just, you know, other students that just went out and they, they went and they spent thousands of dollars trying to live in LA for a year. And, you know, the people that are normally moving out to LA have extensive resumes. They've, they've done a lot. And that's why they're finally making that jump over there. Um, and then you've got the group of people that are fresh out of college moving over there. And when it push comes to shove and you're given a brand new actor versus a seasoned actor, you're probably gonna go with the latter. And so they, a lot of them stayed out there and then they came back and then they gave up on acting because they were like, oh, I didn't make it. I guess that's the end of it. And uh, I actually got, I remember in college, I got weird looks and like everybody was like, why is she doing that? Because I didn't prioritize the school shows. I went out and I did community theater and I went out and did like student films and all these kinds of jazz. And they were just like, why? Why is she doing that? And I remember like one person was like, she thinks she's better than us. That's why she's going out and doing other things. I was like, no, because when you graduate, you have to put, you know, or on your resume, you have to put the, the theater name. And so if I have as many different theaters as possible, it looks better than the same school theater over and over and over again that says I only did college theater. Mm -hmm. And now I could have film as well. Like I'm, I'm using the time that I'm studying not only to study, but also to build up that resume so that I have more diverse work when I go out there. Mm -hmm. That is very true. And like you said, in terms of setup, I think a lot of people have the misconception for voice acting that you just need a microphone. And yeah. you're like, as much as I wish that were true, you need a space. And there's the people that are also that are like, oh, I've got a microphone attached to my headphones. Done. Or mm -hmm. my phone has a microphone. And you're like, and I, I mean, I'm not much better. When I started, I started on my phone. That's right. very true. And I, I think I still have like a, a project that actually finished where you're like, you can tell. And I, I use that now as an example. I mean, like, this is what it, you know, if you, even if you book a part, this is what the audio is going to sound like compared to all the other actors that have decent setups. It right. really does stand out. Um, but I think a lot of people misconstrue of the, you know, I'm going to move straight to Dallas and I, I haven't done anything. And I'm not, I'm not your life coach. I'm not, I'm not a fortune teller. So I can't tell you if that's going to work out or not. Mm -hmm. But I will say that like, I was very hesitant to make that jump. And I was working in Dallas, but I was also working in Dallas very infrequently. Now, maybe if I had said, Hey, I'm in Dallas, I would have gotten more work. I don't know. But I will say that like 99% of my work is from my home studio. And uh, I, you know, especially considering anime doesn't pay super well. Mm -hmm. So trying to make a living doing that is going to be very, very difficult, especially if you just move out and then you've got to get your foot in the studio door and then you've got to prove to directors that you can do the work and you have to work up smaller, you know, most of the time you start off in Walla and you have to work up to bigger parts. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always tell people, you know, I'm not your life coach, do what you want to do. In the end, it is your life. However, I would recommend trying some online projects first right and and then you know it, see how that works out one to you. see if you like it to yeah to get you experience and a resume uh because mm -hmm. one of the, the 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 hardest challenges i've had is people are like how long have you been doing voice acting a year and a half or i might say two but very rarely i'll say two a year and a half is usually what i'll say mm -hmm. okay so then they'll go, do you have any work? Or, or it's the, do you have any work? I'm like, 
most of it's in development, but here's a couple other projects that I've actually voiced in that I'm very proud of that I can share. But a lot of it is, a lot of it's indie work. Nothing wrong with the indie work. They tell great stories. But when you're talking to a casting director for a AAA studio or whatever, you don't want to send them the lowest, you want to send them the highest quality you want to show you can play with the big boys. Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of my current struggle. And in terms of anime and video games, from what I've seen, um, anime and video games are probably amongst, not the lowest, but amongst the lower of the paying projects. A lot of the other stuff is commercials and corporate and explainer videos and stuff like that. Because nobody wants to, not that nobody wants to do that, but a majority of people getting into voice actor acting are like, I want to be in anime. I want to be a video game character. Uh, now there, I have totally run into people that are like, I want to do commercials. I love it. And I'm like, boy, are you going to make bank? Yeah. You are going to do so well. Uh, I'm glad your passion is behind that. Cause I, I'm also one that I started and I was like watching Sailor Moon and going, yeah. oh, I want to, I want to do that. That's I'm in the same boat. I, I would love to do, I mean, I love doing it. But I also want to make this a business that I can then support doing that. Yeah. And it's still like, I've been very, very blessed that most of my work has been video games. Mm -hmm. However, I always tell people, you'd be surprised about rates for video games because there'll be a, a AAA studio that, you know, offers you, you know, this X amount. And then sometimes an indie game will come out and they'll offer you two or three times that amount. Um, and so everybody's always like, oh, you were part of this big project. I bet you made a lot of money. And I'm like, actually, <laughs> this game over here that not many people have heard about was what paid the rent that month, yeah. not the other one. And, you know, it's different budgets. And part of it is supply and demand. And in the end, that's kind of what it breaks down into is mm -hmm. there's uh, a, lot of uh, a lot of people that are wanting to supply voiceover for anime. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not that much demand for it. Anime is a very, uh, one, it's a, a difficult art to kind of master, to, to sink in. And the ADR. Watch. Yeah, to, to do all that. And uh, then it's also very limited compared to how many anime are coming out per year versus how many video games, including tri AAA titles to all the way to indie. Uh, mm -hmm. There's just a huge difference. And then you compare it to commercials because a lot of the commercials, they, that's probably the most uh, demand there is. Yeah. And again, that's actually very little supply. So they tend to pay better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I always try to tell people, you know, I, again, I, I'm never anyone's life coach. I'm not somebody that's going to say, you can't do this, or you have to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, because you know, with this field, and I'm sure you've run into that with some of your interviews, everybody's got different stories of what they oh, focus yeah. on and how they got into it and everything. So to come in and be like, you have to do it my way or the highway is, uh, is yeah, and it's going to isolate a lot of people because maybe you got into it one way, but the person right next to you got into it another way, and the person you're speaking to needs to get into it from that way. And that's also why I recommend to people, like, take multiple classes from yeah. different teachers. Find, you know, if you find a teacher you love, absolutely uh, continue on with them because there's probably some kind of thing that you're, you're getting from them. Yeah. But also... Uh, you know, I've had people that come to me and they're like, Hey, can you recommend other teachers? And I'm like, yes, these are the teachers that I, and they, they tend to teach around my same style as well, just because that's what I like. And I'm assuming if you liked my classes, you like that style. So I'm going to point you to other people that teach that. that do so. Um, mm -hmm. but everybody's got their own paths and, uh, that's why I'm, I'm never going to say you can't do this, mm -hmm. but I will say it is incredibly difficult to make a living only voicing anime or uh, especially starting out to make a living only voicing video games. I'm right. like, I still do commercials. I did a commercial this week. Yeah. Uh, I, I still do commercials because again, sometimes it's just like, oh, that's, I, I, could, I could use that money. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're literally just trying to pay the bills. And uh, if uh, something comes across and you get audition, I mean, great. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, and uh, yeah, I think one of the things that I like to do about um, Behind the Slate is being able to expose different stories in different um, avenues because my route is completely different than your route which is completely different than Amy Smith it's mm -hmm. gonna always be different how we approach things but hopefully someone goes I'm in a similar 
boat as you were. So I'm going to try to kind of use yours as a path. Oh, but I like that. So it's always just everyone's path is different. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm, I'm so open to like, there's tons of different ways you can do it. And maybe you are the person that, you know, is the, what's the, uh, the exception to the rule mm -hmm. that just pops up and suddenly is a star overnight. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe that is you. Uh, statistically speaking, probably not. But again, I'm not, I'm not a fortune teller. And I, the thing is, and we talked about this before, I don't know if it'll uh, get made, you know, put in or not, but uh, the people that I've seen succeed are the people that are coming at it from a hobby perspective or just a love perspective. Because I used to wake up, I, I tend to sleep in. And uh, when I started out, I used to wake up at 6 a.m., like crack dawn, like let's see the new auditions on, yeah. this is how long ago, how long ago it was, uh, the VAA, let's see what they've got today. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would go through and I'd spend just, you know, I'd spend the night looking at auditions and bookmarking them. And mm -hmm. then I'd spend the morning recording and auditioning. And uh, I just, I had, adored it. It was everything. And I, at no point thought I can make a lot of money doing this, or even I could be, the fact that I'm self-employed with this is still rather baffling because I remember telling my parents, uh, uh, I told them uh, what was it that I was going to do theater. And they were like, we think you're really good at voice acting. You should probably try and go with the voice acting route. And I was like, yeah, but nobody, yeah, I can't make a, I can't make a living doing that. Mm. Um, I'll sh that'll show me. <laughs> um, but it, it's one of those things that uh, the people that started it intended to go far were the people that loved it. The people that I've seen that gave up or burned out, for a better term, are the ones that were like, I want to be a superstar or I need to be. They would set deadlines by uh, December 2020. I have to have been in X amount of shows mm. and have 200 credits. And then that time starts to come and it wears down on you. Mm. And it is sometimes even a draw, like draw the love out of you for that, that passion that you had. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I try to tell people like, don't focus on being overnight. Uh, you know, it took me seven years and I'm still growing and learning. And I, you know, I don't know a single actor that books every audition they get. So for you starting out the gate to be like, I auditioned for two things and I didn't get it. I guess it's not meant to be, uh, it's unrealistic. And so I'm like, just have fun with it. And if it's meant to be, it'll be, and if not, you're having fun with it. Like yeah. in the end, if voice acting is what you want to do, you're doing voice acting. Yeah. So goal achieved. Where can people go to find more about you and more about your work? Uh, so I have a website, rachelmesser.com, and it's spelled R-A-C-H-A-E-L, because uh, a lot of people I'll, always- I have a little- little, be a, little, 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 little card right <laughs> there. Look at that card. That's a nice card. Um, <laughs> but I have a website, uh, rachelmesser.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, also both just under at Rachel Messer. Uh, you got to keep- Got to keep everything consistent. And then I'm on Twitch. Guess what ass? Rachel, Rachel Messer. Messer. Oh, look at that. <laughs> um, You're but also, so creative. You got to keep it. Like that's, oh, that's yeah. the thing with branding and marketing is like, if you're under a whole bunch of different names, it's going to be confusing for people to find you on, on other platforms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do uh, also randomly. I did one last night, actually, where I just sit down on Twitch. And I'm like, Who's got voice acting questions? And so it's kind of like a free uh, class, I guess. So just like whatever you want to know, show up and I'll, I'll answer the question. And That's so awesome. I try to do that randomly, um, especially because there are people that get into this that are, they're like, I have, I have zero dollars and I, I can't do anything. I'm like, just come to my Twitch. I like, and I, I get people on Twitch all the time that are playing the game and they're like, how'd you get into this? And I want to tell them, but I'm so invested in the gameplay that I'm like, oh man, I'm going to give you like a terrible answer. That's like half details, half game commentary. So yeah. if you just come back on these days where I'm doing the, the voice acting Q and A. And so it gives me a chance to, to sit down and, and talk to everybody yeah. on there. Um, and yeah. Now you also do workshops in private coaching at sunnybluestudios.com. Okay. So <laughs> there's lots of places to either find what Rachel does and or take a class with her. And she, again, I've taken several classes with you um, and I have another one lined up. 
Uh, so uh, again, it's just a constant learning and a constant uh, trying to expand your knowledge in the field. So again, Rachel is a great person to I'm work with. I'm still learning. Um, and and that's what I like about it. Is, learning. Yeah, you sh I, I, I would think you should be always learning. And, and even if it's in something completely different, like sometimes I'm studying marketing for the month and I want to know you know, what's best, you know, or branding or, you know, and it's not, it's not exciting. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into voiceover because I wanted to learn about marketing. I didn't get into voice actor, voice acting because I wanted to learn about editing, but, or video editing. Like there's a lot of like the promotional side of things you have to do. Like I'm trying to always constantly, not only announce voice roles, but mm -hmm. then go find the footage of those roles, clip it down and then put it on social media. So it's like, Hey, uh, I announced this role. Here's me performing this role. Um, and so there's a lot of it that it's it's not glamorous. It's so not they the don't fun have to part. Through. That's a good idea. Yeah. I've been sending them like the whole thing. I'm like, you can find me at a traffic bot. And then like going through it. Or I'll actually like clip the like the second so they don't actually have to, they'll just go straight to the character. Nice. So that yeah. way you're still like promoting the project, but you're you're just saying, this is where I start voicing. So that way they don't have to sift through everything. And normally the developers love that because you're, you're promoting their project for them, not just once, but twice uh, or, you know, multiple times. Sometimes I'll be like, hey, uh, you know, especially with Facebook and, and things, which I kind of don't like Facebook. Yeah. But, uh, you know, every now and then it's like a memory of like a year ago I announced this role. And so I can go on Twitter and like find a clip of that and be like, hey, guys, a year ago I announced this role here's the performance of it. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, like it's another boost for the company of, hey, uh, I'm still, you know, advertising these things yeah. for you. Thank you. You know, not only thank you for uh, hiring me for voiceover, but I'm not only, you know, I, I've seen people that trash the projects they're in. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some projects that I'm not happy with, uh, but I just don't talk about them. They're not on my resume. They're not, you, you won't find me talking about them right but i'm not going to go out there and be like oh my god i did voice acting for this video game and it was terrible the whole the director was terrible no i'm not going to do that no um because yeah, that'll actually ruin your your business <laughs> yeah well nobody and nobody wants to work with that either yeah. like i if i see you bashing something i'm gonna assume if i hire you you're gonna bash the thing i hired you for yeah so why would i and i want to work with somebody who's having fun but again like it's also a nice thing of maybe that, you know, I, I'm giving away marketing secrets for free here. Uh, but maybe that developer is working on another game and it's been a year later and you re-announce it and they're like, oh, they're still really proud to be a part of this project and they're still talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, so and now you're in their head of, for the next game that they're working on. They're like, oh, yep. yeah, I remember working with that person. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually use it for uh, marketing uh, when I do because I market on LinkedIn. And oh, I've been uh, getting a lot of uh, opportunities, not n necessarily projects, actually one project from LinkedIn, one or two projects actually from LinkedIn, and then several follow-ups. Uh, but they'll, they'll, some t a lot of times it's, uh, I ask the, what inspired you? And then I'll ask like, are there any recent projects that you're proud of? And 90% of the time, 80% of the time, whatever, they go, what about you? what is something you're proud of? And I go, oh yeah, here's like three games uh, or three projects that I, I voiced in. I just select three and here's three projects that I voiced in. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I really like that. And it's, it, it becomes a, a connecting point. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that boils down to also just like uh, human communication, which is something, that's what I've been studying uh, as, of, as of late of just subconscious cues that people give because mm -hmm. uh you can be wanting to present yourself as one way like a, an example is somebody could want to go oh I, I really want to i want people to like me i want people to know that i'm friendly but it comes across as fake uh and so it's like being able to see why is this genuine and why is this fake and not only does that help you with just human communication as it is uh but it also helps you with performances maybe you need to play a character that's being really fake but you don't want to be obvious about it so you've got like these little cues that you can do and that's where you get performances that are like there's something that i don't trust about this character but i don't know what yeah. and that's kind of what you're going with if the and i think everybody's seen one of those villains one of the one most recently 
And uh, I never put this on the actor or the director because I or anything because I, I don't know what went on behind the scenes. So I'm not trashing any of this. But it was Jurassic World 2 when one of the guys comes in uh, from Lockwood's mansion. And uh, I'm just like, that's the bad guy. And he's, he's trying to be friendly and everything. And you're supposed to trust him. I'm like, I, the second he walked on screen, I knew he was the bad guy. Yeah. So there's, there's no plot twist there at the yeah. end because you, it was like bashed over the head with you. Um, yeah. And again, like, I don't know if that was intended. I don't know the situation, but if you're trying to be an act, you know, if you're an actor and you're trying to portray a character that's supposed to be subtle and you're doing that, it's going to ruin the performance. So like yeah. being able to, to find all those things. Um, and that's why I like the, you know, just genuine stuff, but it also helps you with just being able to communicate with people mm -hmm. and uh, not just come across as like, I only want to talk about me. Let's only talk about me. Uh, especially because after like a while, I get bored. Of, I'm not interesting. <laughs> I get really bored talking about me. I'm yeah. like, let me, t I'll tell you stories for days about my dogs. Okay. Or how my bird's an asshole. I could tell you <laughs> stories about that forever. Uh, and, and like, I, I also like I, at conventions and stuff, this is where it gets the worst is I, I did like 30 or 40 conventions in one year. It was Whoa. ridiculous. Uh, it was absolutely exhausting. And at like halfway through the year, I was like, man, I keep doing these Q and A's and I'm bored. I want to know about this person. This person's like, Oh, I want to know about like how you got into voice acting and everything. I'm like, what do you do, man? <laughs> this conversation's boring for me. What do you do? What's your life? Like, please tell me. What are you strange. interested in, interested in voice acting and <laughs> talking to me? Like, I want to know that. Yeah. What's your favorite part of this convention? Me? Like, what are you, cause like, and then, you know, uh, even though it's because, I don't want to talk about me anymore. I'm bored with it. Uh, one, I get to know something about them. And then it also uh, gets to where they like you more. Like there's a, there's a study that I, and I, I can't validate the study, but it was like, if you go on a first date with somebody and that person talks more about themselves than you do about yourself, normally that person walks away from the date going, I really like that. I feel like I connected with that person because they got to talk more. But if you go into the date and you're like, let me tell you all about me. Uh, they're just like, okay, well, that person's just kind of egotistical and I don't want to hang out with them anymore. I didn't feel like I had a rapport with them. Right. So it, it, there's a lot of like human interaction study and it helps you be able to communicate better and it helps you with performance too. Yeah. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for your time and just coming on the show with me. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. I had a, an absolute blast. And it's nice to be able to do a, a, a video one yeah. for once because most of the time I'm just audio. Thanks for listening to Behind the Slate with guest Rachel Messer. If you liked the episode, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell button to stay notified. I look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> for sure. Oh, I, you're going to see my puppies in the background. Oh, the that's okay. Hi, pupper. <laughs> Where is... <laughs> Sorry, I messed that up. I never laugh, so I wouldn't know. Darren, I tried to do that. <laughs> you did it! You succeeded in it! Who's the better actor here? I can't snap with the, the right hand, but I can snap with the left. I can snap with the left and not the right! Okay.